it's April 1st, so happy April Fool's joke day. I'm not going to play any jokes today because I'm not that funny. But today we are going to be working on our charity event. We're working on Block 3 of Heartfelt, and it's called Darling. And this quilt was designed by Corey Yoder. There are five blocks. And so this one gets a little bit more complicated because there's more fabrics than we've done in the past. And what we're going to do today is we're going to cut all of the fabric for all five blocks and then I'm going to piece one block for you guys today. So we're going to kind of just jump right in and we have raised over $75,000 for Make-A-Wish. And at the end of the video, I'm going to get to show you another quilt that we're going to be giving um, the pattern away for free once we hit 80,000, so that's super exciting. So like I've talked about a couple of times, I, whenever I'm working on a pattern, I sit and really look through the whole pattern before I do anything, just to kind of get an idea of what, what I'm jumping into, I guess. So I've already got my background fabric and we're gonna start with cutting our background fabric. This block is really easy because all we're gonna be working with are quarter inch seams, and corner square tri corner squares I guess is what you would call them so we don't have to use triangle paper we don't have to make flying geese very easy so this is my background fabric that we have left that we've been cutting from if you watch tutorial 1 and tutorial 2 and I looked and we need 10 six and a half inch squares and 22 and a half inch squares so I think I can get that from two six and a half inch strips and one two and a half inch strip and if I can't we're gonna we'll figure it out but what I've done is you can see down here this is my fold I've ironed everything and I've layered two things so I need two six and a half inch strips so I'm just gonna come over here make sure all the layers I'm cutting through and I'll cut the right side first And then I'm just going to rotate that real quick. Try not to move it at all. That was probably not the best, the best move I've ever done, but. And then I just try to line up again, making sure that there's not any overage or underage, I guess. So you want it to be as lined up as possible. So those are six and a half inch strips. Now I need one two and a half inch strip. So I'm going to just move one layer apart, cut a two and a half inch strip. So I'm gonna just line it up as detailed as I can. And then I will put all this background fabric back in the box. And if I don't have enough from this two and a half inch strip, I have some scraps from previous months I can use instead of cutting a whole strip. So what I'll do is just move the two and a half out of the way and then I'm going to cut the six and a half and I usually start with the fold side just because the salvage I don't want to have to like flip through to see if I've got through all the layers. So what I would like to do is I'm just going to cut once and again we need 20 of these so I'm going to need, I'm gonna need so that's four. Oh, I need 10 of these. I was gonna say my math is wrong. Eight. And I only need two more. So I don't wanna cut this, the bottom layer because I can use that for my two and a half inch square. So I'm gonna cut from right here. And then this obviously, it's not enough to save. So I'm gonna get rid of that use my design boards and you know Kevin asked a funny question the other day he said really do you need more design boards and I just kind of looked at him like yes I do that's a dumb question now from here I need 22 and a half inch squares so I'm just gonna start with this strip first and then we'll um, we'll cut the rest from this little piece 
and everything that I started with, if you go back to December, January, okay, so right there, that's crooked. So right there, see that? That's crooked. So I'm going to retry that. I just try not to get my head in the video. That's Um, so if you go back to like December, January, you'll see that I've starched everything. So everything's really nice and stiff. And I usually cut at the five, then the two and a half. And then I'm just going to keep going until we get to 20. I can get 16 from one strip. And the only reason I know that is because when I proof books, that's like part of the math. So that's eight. And then hopefully I can get two more if the salvage is not too. Sometimes the salvage kind of gets a little too far into the fabric. So I'm going to look just to make sure that there's no salvage and there is. There's salvage on that. So I actually have 15, not 16. And um, we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show you how you can see it. But this salvage is, uh, I guess, thicker would be, like it just goes further in. So you can see these little dots right here. Now, technically, I could use this because, oh, sorry, that's wind. I could use it because, let's see, it's going to be hidden in the seam, but I'm just going to not use it. So that would be 15, so I need five more. So I'll put this in my scrap to save, and then I'm going to cut a 5-inch square. And then I'll probably turn it a little bit crooked. It's easier to do it this way. And then I'm going to cut. This will give me four, and then I need one more. So I just try to use as um, little waste as possible. And then this might also be in the salvage, so we'll see. Yeah, that one didn't get in the salvage. So for some reason, this salvage didn't come up. And I'm just looking, there's some little dots you can see. And then I'll kind of chop this off and I'll save this because I might need it. And at the end of the project, I can always cut it up and put it in my scrap boxes. So those are my bees, and I might have cut one too many, one too short, that's fine. And sorry about the noise, it's very windy here, and um, it's raining, so that's my A and B. Now the next part is, we made it really easy. So these are our A's and B's, the backgrounds. My C's are here, one, two, three, four, five. And to make it easy for the video, we have already put those together and ironed them. So, ta-da, they're on a design board because you can never have too many design boards. So to make it easy for the video, what we did is we lined up one side. So, fabric C, fabric C, fabric C, C and C. And then what I'm going to do is just take them. They moved a little bit when I took them off the design board. I'm going to move them all the way to the left so that I'm worrying about this little cut right here. And on these, I need to cut one six and a half by 12 and a half inch rectangle from this. And there happens to be a Creative Grids ruler that's the same exact size. So I'm going to actually cheat and do that. And then I'll put this, I will roll this. I'm going to just leave that just like it is, but I um, can just roll it and put it back in my box like that. And then from here, I will just cut the other two sides.
Now you could also get that cut from this larger ruler. I'm just taking a little shortcut. So these are my C's. And we're gonna do something kind of fun where we put all the fabrics together at the end, but for now I'm just gonna cut them. So they're fit fitting nice. And then the next part are D's. And this one's not gonna be in order because some of them are bigger. So this is the first one, the second one, third, fourth, fifth. So we put those smallest pieces at the front. They're all lined up nice and ironed. From here, I need to cut four two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. So what I wanna do is four times two and a half is 10. So I could start with a four and a half by 10 inch rectangle first. And I'm doing that so that I can just cut off the absolute minimum so I don't have any waste. So 10 inches here, four and a half is here, I can move it a little bit. Now I can put this in my box. And I, I probably later will um, unfold them and then fold them back individually, but for now I'll do that. And because my fabrics are starched, they're not moving. Now, if you don't starch when you're moving your fabrics right here, they might not stick together as nicely. So I've got my four and a half and I need to cut four two and a half subcuts from that. So start at the five. And I do want to say sometimes I do this and I do the wrong math. So uh, sometimes I kind of shoot myself in the foot doing this thinking oh i have my math correct you know so it doesn't always work so don't get frustrated if you try that and then it doesn't work out but i'm trying to have as little waste as possible and then these will be my d's now there's a helicopter outside i mean really could it get louder it's only it's only loud on fridays i think do I hear that helicopter? That's crazy. Okay, now this one we're gonna cut E and F. So we've got E and F. And I just double check myself. E and F. This one, this one, this one. So make it nice and flat. Okay, so let's see what we have to cut. We need to cut, first we need to cut a four and a half inch square. So I like to cheat and just use a square ruler. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So from this corner, I'm just gonna cut a four and a half inch square. And not everybody cuts the way I do. So, um, don't, you know, you can cut however you want. You don't have to do it just like me. Um, and I've never used salvage for a project. I know there's some cute things out there. I just haven't done it yet. Um, so, not yet. And then I need three two and a half by four and a half. So that would be seven and a half by four and a half. So, do the same thing. Seven and a half, except this time I'm actually going to cut on this line I just cut. Or no, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and go past it. I'm going to cut here. And then there are some little cuts in the fabric, and I just try to be cognizant of that when I go back and cut again. I try to cut as little as possible into the fabric that's remaining. So I'll cut this into four and a half. And then this time, three, two and a half. So, okay, and I want that to be lined up right there. It's so hard to cut on camera because I don't want my head to go in the video. So two and a half, two and a half. Hopefully I did my math right. 
Oh, barely. Okay, and these are my e my Fs. But on this one, what I think would be really good is um, so that I don't make a mistake because what I'm going to do is do one, one block here, but when I get home, I want it to be super organized. So what is a good thing to do is to kind of put it by color. Um, so I'm going to pull the C. I'm going to pull everything for the first block first. So C. Let's see. My D is going to be here. Oh, and now we have a car. So we've got a car, rain, and helicopter. We can see what else is going to show up today. D, so these are my D's, and then my E. It's gonna be this. And then my F is going to be this. So what I will do when I get home tonight, because I'm gonna sew this tonight, is I'm gonna pull everything out for a block and put them together. And I'll just get extra alpha bitties out to um, to label the others. But that way I don't accidentally sew a green to a pink or something like that. So let's see. For We're going to start by laying out the block. And there's a couple of different things I'm going to show today. And I, I hope I don't confuse anybody. But when I'm looking at a pattern, I'm going to look at it as how can I stitch or quilt or piece this block as efficiently as I can without changing my feet as many poss as many times as possible. So I'm gonna actually do these two steps at the same time and I'm gonna add the corner squares after because I'm gonna do the, the corner squares at the same time as this one and you're gonna see how you can save time. So we always put how many you need. So you don't even have to really read the instructions if you don't want to. You can just lay them out and make one from each set. So I'm gonna start laying out. So D and F. And then I'm gonna to go to this one because these three all go together eventually. And I know that because I kind of looked before. And then my D's and my E. So this right here ends up being the left side of your heart and this is the right side of your heart. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to piece all of this and I'm going to add the corner squares on the next step. Because it doesn't matter which way you do it or which order you do it in, it's all going to come out the same. So corner squares can be done before or after. And so kind of what I'm going to do is pull from the left. I'm going to change the foot. So this is the foot that comes with the machine. It's too tight. I can't undo it. Hold on, sorry. We're going to have to get somebody to unscrew the thing. Oh, I got it. I got it. Sorry. Ooh, that was whoever screwed that on was tight. This is the one I prefer. And this is the one I bought from Lisa Bonjean. So I'm going to kind of have everything over here, sew it, and then put it back, and then we'll iron. And with this, you can use pins or you don't have to. I'm going to use pins since I'm on video. I mean, there's times where I wouldn't. It just kind of depends. And I'm using RFL 2000 on this one. So I'm going to put the sewing machine at a 1.5. And 
I just pin the bottom. I like to use really nice thin pins. We did order more of the, the little house pins and they're supposed to arrive soon. And then I'll just go back here cut apart and I'm going to iron all of these at one time so then just kind of keep keep going it just saves time so if you haven't donated to make a wish we would love for you to donate we have a link below and of course like this video if you can I'm moving my shoes out of the way so from here I am going to follow the pattern on the pressing so these press towards the darker so I will set my seam here set my seam here finger press and put the iron right on that seam and just kind of let it sit there and I'll put a clapper on it and then these go the other way. So I'll do this. This one's easier to press in. And you know, I don't know what I would do without clappers because now I use them all the time, but it's so funny to think about it because I never used to use them. So for years I sewed without them. So it's kind of one of those things that now I use and sometimes I wonder what I was doing all those years without them. And then here you just put them back and I'm going to pin. And this one, um, the way that we have the seams, they will nest. So if you press, you can just pull with your finger and it'll lock right there. You know that it's nesting because it stops all on its own. Now, of course, if you're somebody who likes to press open, you can definitely press open this block. Sometimes I'm in the mood to press open, so you can always press open if you want. And then when I'm starting, I just make sure it's lined up. Remove my pin right before I go over it. Then come back and add the top. So if you have any questions on anything sewing, let me know any kind of questions. I think some of y'all are like probably bored. Y'all have seen me sew a million times and y'all probably already have answered or seen the answer to the question. So there I've got two intersections and I'm gonna sew quarter inch seam. And then here it tells you to press towards the bottom, but in the end, honestly on this block, it really doesn't matter. But I set the seam, press, set the seam, press, and this quilt's gonna be a 76 by 84 when it's done. And I'm gonna let the clapper sit on that we're going to add fabric B squares, corner squares, to the top of that and the top of the C. So I'm gonna take four squares of B and two squares of A because I need to draw a line on the wrong side of all of these. So I'm gonna do that real quick. 
I use a friction pin because it disappears with heat later. So just draw a line. Try to go from point to point if you can. And um, if you have an 11 year old or a 12 year old, they can do this. So I'm so proud of Will. He was he's in sixth grade and he's on the sixth grade music memory UIL team. And on Monday they had a test because they needed to move one kid from the sixth grade to the seventh grade team. And he got moved up. So that's super exciting. Now I'll have my handy dandy glue. You always ask, okay, let's see what it's called. Seam align glue. I always forget what it's called. And I'm gonna put my squares here. This is the next step, so I'll move this. So that's gonna go there. That's gonna go there. And then this one, you just need to make sure you've got the big piece at the bottom and not at the top, or else you'll have a big piece of plaid. And then you're gonna put your corner squares here. Now, you can see when this comes out, if you put it on before or after, it's the same effect. It really doesn't matter. And um, I just want to, you know, glue all at once. And I also kind of have been wondering lately, what did I ever do without this glue? And I do put a little bit too much, so I know that. Um, I just don't want it to move. And I think I get some satisfaction of the glue coming out for some reason. I did finally have to fill my my little thing up the other day. Okay. So then before I sew, I just want to double check that looks right um, because, oh, actually we can kill two birds with one stone. We could put these A's at the bottom too. And this one, this is one where you could pin because if you pin, you could use the other side of this half square triangle when you're done. With glue, you can't use the leftovers, but today I'm in the mood to just not have to worry about that. So. And that's way too much glue, but since we're on camera, I don't want it to move. So now all I have to do is sew these. And I'm you're going to see that if you have downloaded the free pattern, I'm going a little bit out of order. And the reason I'm doing that is anytime I'm sewing, whether it's a pattern I've written, whether it's a Lori Holt pattern, Camille, Fig Tree, anybody's patterns, I do it the way that I do it to be the most efficient and to save as much time as I can. And um, this glue is called Seam Align Glue by Acorn Precision. And it is important to keep the tip on or it'll dry. So from here, I'll change my foot to an open toe foot. And it's just so I can see the lines. And when you're sewing this at home, you can sew it using, doing, you know, the way the pattern has it. It's, it's just slightly different. So I'm going to just stitch on the lines. Now it is important to sew exactly to that point, which I don't think I did. See, it's a little bit off. So I didn't get exactly to that point. I'm a little bit to the right, so I'm gonna fix that. And I'm just gonna sew over it.
one more seam. Then from here, I'm going to just trim a quarter inch away. And like I said, since I use glue, I can't use these. But if you didn't use glue, you could stitch a quarter inch seam right here, open it up, and have a half square triangle. And you know, at home tonight, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. I, I kind of, a lot of things I do when I'm sewing, I do, you know, depends what kind of mood I'm in. Do I have extra time to make half, extra half square triangles? Okay, then maybe I will. If I don't, just go with it. Just kind of depends what kind of mood. I'm in, how much time I have, is there a good TV show on, I'm kind of wondering what's going to be on Dateline tonight, so the left side of the heart you press everything toward the background, but before I do that I'm going to press down to set my seam. I do think it makes a big difference setting your seam and not setting your seam. If I'm in a hurry and I don't set my seam, I do feel like my fabric isn't, doesn't come out as nice. And I'm not sure if that was supposed to hit exactly on the quarter inch, but mine didn't, so I think it's okay. Patchwork looks okay. And then put the clapper on it onto the side. And then this one, I'm going to press this one to the outside, towards the background, and the other two towards the pink fabric. That way the seams nest, and you'll see that next. And this block and this quilt, it's so pretty and makes you feel good if you've donated to Make a Wish. Makes like, you know, feels like you've done something good. And if you are a cross stitcher, our release three this morning also came out, which is column three. So lots to look forward to. We like to give you lots of free things. So for here, this is the very ending step. So what I'll do is put them right sides together and pin couple of times. So this one, the same thing. I could just do it blindly. You just move your finger and it nests. And as long as it looks like it meets right there, then you're good. And then anytime there's things that nest, I, I iron those first. I mean, pin those first. And then at the, I'm going to pin in the inside and I'm going to show you something at the top that's Okay, when you look at the top, it's not perfectly lined up. You can see that the top fabric is like an 16th or an eighth of an inch longer. But I'm going to just make it match. Pin it, and it'll ease in. Or should ease in. Usually it works. Move to my quarter inch foot. And then sew down this last seam and then we'll press and then I'll talk about how I'm assembling my um, finishing. Y'all are so quiet today. Y'all don't have any questions. So this, I will just set the seam. Now I'm going to press towards this fabric because if you press towards this, there's a lot of seams. So it's easier to press this way. And they're sashing in the front and the bottom. And because of that, it doesn't matter which way you press.
So from here, I'm going to trim up the block just to get any of the little hairs off and just to get it. Yeah, this is a this is a step you definitely don't have to do. This is just something I like to do. And if you've pieced really accurately, very little is going to come off. Now, you can tell you're having a bad day when you start trimming and a lot comes off. So, depends. So, what I'll do is go home and make the remaining blocks. And I will leave, I will put a big design board on here face down, carry it home, and I will have these blocks made tonight. I'm going to make them during Dateline or 2020, whichever one is better. So you're going to make five more. But if you bought the finishing kit from us, you will have the finishing pattern. If you don't, you'll have to just, just wait for that. But that was the bonus of getting the kit. But what I've done is I circle as I go. So, so like this block and this block are already done. So I've already sewed them together. Now this one's gonna go right here. So I can sew this and I can add a sashing piece and my sashing pieces I believe are at home. Okay, I'm gonna take them home. So I'm just building as I go so that when I get to the end, a lot of my rows will be done. And like this one is at the bottom. This one, you know, won't be able to connect this one because it goes to this. So that's just something that, and I'm kind of keeping them, um, just sewing as I go. That's something you don't have to do. I just enjoy it. It makes it kind of come together. I think one of the hardest things when you're sewing is when you get to that very last step and you've got to put it all together because, um, when you put it together, it just takes a lot of physical work, I guess. And so like, you know, you're adding your, your borders and all that. So I think it's great to be able to um, kind of build as you go. Um, so now that I've shown you that, I'm gonna show you my sample maker block so that if you're not sewing with our kit, you can see how it looks in different fabrics. This fabric is Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea and the little accent stitches are in Aurafil 12 weight, color 2021, and Carrie made these blocks. So she's doing lots of different colors. So this is Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea from Moda. The next one is Flirt by Sweetwater. And Elva made these, so if you've ever called customer service or emailed, I'm sure you've talked to her. She's worked for us for 10 years years. Yesterday was her 10 year, or two days ago was her 10 year anniversary. And then this is my favorite one because I love the, uh, I love how it kind of, it's different fabrics, but it, you can't really tell. So this is Flirt by Sweetwater. The next one is uh, Bonhoeur du Jour by French General. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And Lori stitched these. And it's fun to see how the different designers use different fabrics. Some kept all these red, some, you know, changed it. So that is French General fabric. The next samples we have are One Fine Day by Bonnie and Camille. And these were made by Riley. 
This one kind of reminds me of St. Patrick's Day a little bit. So that's great that this pattern, whenever we're designing something for a charity so along, we want it to be universal and be something that lots of different fabrics will look good in the design. And um, when you're designing stuff, we have to keep that in mind. The last one is Love Notes. The designer is Layla Boutique. And Deborah made these blocks. And then after this, I'm gonna show our milestone quilt. A couple of new things, and then I'm gonna answer all the questions at the very end. I love all of these fabrics, they look so good. So again, Love Notes by Layla Boutique. Okay, so this quilt right here is the front and the back. I'm gonna put it on the table and we'll talk about it. So whenever we're working on a charity, what we found when we first started these charity events is people would raise money and then obviously the money would drop off. But we want to encourage people to keep donating throughout the year. So our next milestone is once we hit $80,000, this pattern will go up for free. So we have like $4,900 left to get to. This is Threads That Bind by Blackbird Designs. It has not shipped yet, but it should be shipping later this month. And Nova designed this, she stitched it and she added the quilt, this one of the same quilt blocks to the back. And then with her sewing machine, she put the date, her initials, um, a sewing machine. And then I don't know if she stitched that cat, but I think a sewing machine did stitch that cat. And then Gina from Thread Graffiti quilted this one. So once we get to $80,000, we will put this free pattern up and um, you'll see that one thing you could do with this pattern too, another thing you could do when you're looking at this, sorry, all of these hearts, the way you know the top is, sorry, these hearts go up. I think I have it wrong. But one thing you could do is you could rotate the block. So you could rotate all these hearts to go up to where all the hearts go up. You could rotate uh, these. You can do all kinds of things to change this up and play with the direction of the fabrics. And this sampler fabric is really cute. It's gonna be really popular when it comes in. And then this week we got some new, we got this new ironing board cover in stock. And this is by Bonnie and Camille. And this one is for a standard ironing board. And then we also have the Lori Holt ironing board cover. So we install, I just kind of thought, well, since we got a new ironing board, we'll kind of talk about ironing board covers. So these two fit a standard ironing board. This is my happy place ironing board cover. And this is aqua standard ironing board cover. Camille's fabric, Lori's fabric. We also have some wide ironing board covers. And I think that means, you know, You'll have to look at the size, but it's 20 by 50. So um, this is the navy wide ironing board cover. This one is snip snip wide ironing board cover, and this one's Ruby Star. And then this one is Moon Glow wide ironing board cover. So these two are from Ruby Star. This one is Bonnie and Camille. And I just thought it'd be kind of fun to show if you're looking for a new ironing board cover. And then now I'm going to, once I clean this off, I'm gonna answer all the questions you have for me today. And um, next week we are gonna also have a tutorial and that tutorial is going to be 
making um, a, a basket block. So you'll get to see a tutorial next week. Um, and I'm gonna answer questions. Let's see, Kim asks, is glue based it the same as seam aligned glue? I don't know what glue based it is, so I'm not sure. Um, Paula says, what and why did you change feet? So with the Juki, um, it doesn't have the, they, they're, um, they're called the, I can't think of the name of it. This is different right here. It's called like a long, I can't think of it, but it's different than like a Bernina. A Bernina, you can snap the little bottoms on and off. But these, I just prefer these feet. I feel like they're more accurate. Now you could, like someone is um, suggesting that I get um, like a little seam guide for my Juki, but I prefer to change my feet because I'm crazy. Um, my stitch length is a 1.5. How many quilts are on my schedule for 2022? I'm at like 16, 15, 16. Um, and I found out about a new one that I might be adding to my um, schedule. So, um, and you'll get, to, if you want to see my Moda Blockheads 2, Moda Blockheads 4, Block 2, you can check that out on Instagram. The pins I use are little house pins and they come from Japan and they take forever to get here and we've ordered them a long time ago. Um, where do I watch Dateline in 2020? Oh, I on the TV. I'm old school. I don't know how to do. I have Hulu and stuff on my phone, but it always says your subscription doesn't pay for this TV show. So I don't. I don't really know what I'm doing. And it's so funny because the other day Will texted me and said, "Mom, do we have a Hulu account? Do we have a family Hulu account?" I said, "Yeah, ask your dad for the password because, like, Dad knows everything. He knows how to do everything." He goes, Dad's never used Hulu. I'm like, okay, I'll handle it when I got home. And I couldn't believe it. I typed the password in and I was like, oh my gosh, it actually worked because half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. The glue does not gum up my machine, but I don't stitch over the glue. I just make sure to not stitch over the glue. Why don't I use the 12 and a half inch ruler to make it exactly 12 and a half? I don't know, I thought I did. I think I did. A single block and some borders would make nice placemats. Yeah, that would be really cute. And you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, on social media, I've seen a lot of placemats where like on the left, it'll be a square and on the right, they put flying geese to get it, to get a length. Oh, Donna Price. Kimberly, I love the UNCF quilt I received in the mail. It is beautiful and I will cherish it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for bidding. Yay, Donna. Kate says, when she's piecing and then sewing a longer seam like I did, by the time I get to the end, I have bunching fabrics. Any tips? Yes. So on that, I find that it happens when I'm in a fussy mood or I'm going just too fast. So I would recommend starching, making sure everything's ironed and flat before you cut, going slow as you cut, and then just pinning. Um, but I Sometimes that happens to me if I'm just going too fast or, you know what I mean? Just trying to do way too much in a small amount of time. I'm putting on binding on one of my quilts and I miscalculated and it's 10 inches too short. Oh my, I'm so sorry. I hope that's not April Fool's joke because that's not funny. If I could have only which Bella solid, what would it be? Oh, it would be color 97. I have no idea what that is. So sorry, but that's really loud. I think today they're just trying to test me. With an applique quilt, would you have the quilting go over the applique? Okay, so that's a totally subjective uh, designer uh, like um, decision. So I think like some people don't like the applique to go, the quilting to go over the applique. Some don't mind. I would say talk to your quilter or just kind of figure out what your preference is. Since I don't applique, I don't really have a good answer on that. I don't think those uh, ironing board covers fit big boards. I think they only fit like the larger size ironing boards that you would get at Walmart. But you could measure your your um, measure your board from uh, like your big board and then look at the measurement we have on uh, Fat Quarter Shop. 
where do you find wide ironing boards? I haven't had any luck. So if you go to Walmart, they do have some wider, like they're not like big boards. Now, if you want a big board, you can buy that off um, probably like a local quilt store. We don't, we don't, I don't think we sell those anymore. And the ironing boards do include the pad. And I don't use a walking foot when I'm sewing. So that's it, guys. Please, please, please donate to Make-A-Wish. I hope you have a wonderful April Fool's day. I hope my kids don't get any pranks over on me. I'm, I'm on alert to not get tricked today. So I hope you don't get tricked either. And have a great weekend.